Hey everybody, welcome to another minute where proof is possible. I'm Corbett Lunsford. Today we're talking about testing buildings where there is more than one home present. This can be a little tricky, so let's go ahead and uh, go over at least the pointers, if not a hands-on training, which is very difficult to do on YouTube. So first of all, why do we care? Who cares about this stuff? Well, I'll tell you, anybody who lives in a multifamily building cares about this, because if air can leak into and out of units and between units, then you can carry smells and moisture and cigar smoke and cooking and all kinds of different things that you don't necessarily want to be breathing. So you want to be able to prove that each unit is airtight. And this is a part of maintaining good air quality throughout the entire building so that everybody's happy and happy to live there and happy to stay. So is uh, one big test of the entire building a good idea? You want to think about this very carefully before you try it. You need special equipment if you're going to do it. You need to be working to special standards. You need to work to a different pressure than uh, a normal blow order test. And of course, when you look at these big buildings, they can be pretty intimidating. Um, they are going to take you longer. So some things that you need to ask yourself are, how much horsepower do I need behind my fans? Meaning, how many fans do I need to own? Uh, and these fans are rated in CFM when they're wide open. So for example, uh, a typical blower door can blow about five to 6,000 cubic feet per minute by itself. So if you need to push 50,000 CFM to test one of these big buildings, you're gonna need 10 fans. And you're not going to just need to have those fans, you're going to need to have 10 doorways, or at least five doorways with two blower doors a piece in each of those things, which means you're going to need to have special equipment to have two doors, uh, uh, one door fitted with two fans, etc. How many people are in this building? Now, if you're lucky, you're testing a building that is new construction, and no one lives there. And there are no painters, and no inspectors, and no subcontractors, and no HVAC guys, and, and, and. There is no way you're ever going to find a building like that. So what you need to know instead is how many people are going to give me a pain in the butt while I'm testing this building. Because, of course, this is a very pressure-sensitive test. So if anyone opens or closes a door while you are doing this test, or, God forbid, a window or a door to outside, you are going to have to reset your test. So this is something that you really need to take into consideration and have... Uh, fees built into place to take care of the fact that this is going to take you a lot longer than you thought at first. So when you have more floors, you get more problems. This is what they say, right? They say that. Uh, the thing to think about is this. If you have a 40-story building, and you're testing in Chicago uh, late fall, where it's 20 degrees outside, um, you might have as much as four pascals per story of stack effect buildup. You take four Pascals times 40 stories, and that's 160 pascals. 160 is an interesting number because it's actually more than twice uh, the blower door test's pressure on both the bottom end and on the top end. Of course, in the middle of this building, there's going to be your neutral pressure plane. That's where it's the same pressure inside as outside. Uh, that's zero. So you'd have plus 75 pascals at the top and plus, minus 75 pascals at the bottom if you had only 150. And of course, we're talking about 160, worst case. 75 pascals is significant because that is the test pressure that you are going to be building to. So when you're already at negative 75 pascals at the bottom of the building, you're going to have to push real hard to get that thing 75 past that. So you're going to have to go to negative 150 in order to actually bring the entire building to your pressure. There's all kinds of subtleties in this, and I am not a multifamily building testing expert. There are people like that out there, and you can hear some of them on my Building Performance podcast. Um, but these are the kind of things that you're going to need to be thinking about. So if we're not going to test the whole building, are we going to test each unit? Great idea. I think that's wonderful. Um, this is what is going to be required by code when you have air tightness levels. Uh, it's going to be unit to unit tightness. Now, here's what is important about this. If you have this nine story, uh, excuse me, nine unit building configuration, three stories with three right next to each other, uh, what you could do if you weren't thinking about it very hard is just set up a blower door on one of these units and test it. Now, what that will give you is a very important number. That number is how much air leakage there is to outside and to anything else that's connected to this unit. That is significant because it has 
uh, some to do with energy efficiency, and some to do with air quality, which has nothing to do with energy efficiency at all. If you are an energy efficiency program, and your entire goal is to make sure that you are making buildings more energy efficient, then you don't actually care about unit-to-unit -unit leakage, which is one of the downfalls of these programs, by the way, because they're not taking this into account, because they're not paid to. If you were going to do that, you would have to really set up four blower doors and run them at the same time so that you could test the one at the bottom with the leakage only to outside. So you would induce the same pressure in all of the apartments adjacent to this unit in order to find out exactly how much it's leaking to outside only. Now, in this nine unit building, you would have to set up 33 blower door tests in order to do this method that I'm talking about, which only pinpoints energy efficiency. That's very hectic. Now, if you're in a three flat, which in Chicago we've got a lot of, there is just a three-story building, there's a unit on each floor. What you can do if you only have one blower door, uh, you're only one person, you're there for just a few hours, you're not being paid that much to do this, um, is you can test one unit with the blower door, and while you have the blower door set up, which is something that I always recommend you do, if you're going to buy a blower door, set it up, get your CFM 50, and then you don't do zonal pressure testing, you are wasting a huge opportunity. So everyone in the entire world, whenever you set up a blower door test, do at least one zonal pressure test while you have it set up. You're going to thank me later, trust me. So while you have this blower door running on one unit, you test the zonal pressure relationship of each of the other units. And if you do this uh, on each of the units, you would find out that generally there's going to be a very specific relationship and they're going to be shared relationships. That's a way that you can back out the CFM. That's a much bigger conversation that's very technical and we can get into that in another video. So before you run any test, you want to know what to expect to see with that test. So when you're testing new homes, you're going to test them with the expectation that you're going to hit a certain error changes per hour. This is a volume-based calculation, and that is the way that the codes work right now. So uh, the 2012 IECC works off three air changes per hour at 50 pascals. In Illinois, we adapted it to five air changes per hour. If you're on the 2009 IECC, that's seven air changes per hour. So you're going to want to know exactly what that number is by using the calculation. If you're testing an existing home, one real quick rule of thumb is to take how many square feet the home is uh, for example, if you're in a 2,500 square foot home, you might expect, just to know what to expect, that you would have about one CFM per square foot of floor area. So you'd want to be able to blow 2,500 CFM at 50. And if you're testing a multifamily building, and it's an existing building, you're going to expect that it's leakier than you would want it to be so that you can fix it up later. And that might be half a CFM per square foot of envelope surface area, and all blower door tests eventually are going to adapt to this because this is the only real way to test how uh, apples to apples these buildings are because, of course, a taller building with more massive interior space is going to score better on the blower door test just virtue of the fact that it has less leakage opportunity. Uh, now, here is something that I want to make sure that you're clear on. There is a quality control check that I was taught by Bob Davis from Ecotope. It's really cool. Uh, what you do is you get your airflow at full pressure. If you're doing a blower test on a residential property, that's 50 pascals. If you're doing a blower test on a big building, that's 75 pascals. Then you cut to half the pressure of what you were just at. So you would cut from 50 to 25. Or if you're doing a duct tightness test, you would cut from 25 to 13. And when you are at that half pressure, the airflow should be two-thirds of what it was at the full pressure, not half two-thirds. This is something that you can use to up your credibility with code officials and with other people who are looking over your shoulder. So you can show them that I don't even trust my, my own numbers. I double check myself all the time. Generally, if you've set the hoses up wrong and you're, you've configured the test uh, incorrectly, this is not going to work out for you and it'll be a good red flag for you to find. So proof is possible. Happy testing. I hope that this helps you. Tune in next time.